Welcome back to Recovery for Life. I'm Chris Howard, your counselor at Indigo Recovery in New York City, and host of this bi-weekly podcast, where we come together to talk about addiction and recovery, personal growth and connection. I'm going to virtually pass the mic and give everyone a few minutes to say hello and fill us in on the last couple of weeks. Audrey, why don't you go ahead, start us off. Hi, it's Audrey. I've been with Midtown Health and Wellness since like 2019. Recently, I got the Sublicade shot. I got it like two days ago and I feel good. It's really freeing to know, A, I put in a lot of work to get to this point and I still have a lot of work to do, but it keeps going. And also the fact that I have so much support in my life right now. I mean, I always had support for my family and my friends, but I'm accepting the support even more so now. And I'm just so grateful and things are like finally coming full circle and I have felt that way before and obviously, you know, there are ups and downs to everything. I don't want to expect things to get bad again for me after feeling so great, but I know that that's just part of life. There are ups and downs. I lost my job um, and I wanted to quit. So it overall, it's a good thing. Yes, it was very emotional, but it's a good thing. I'm I'm feeling good. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I've just been like writing and drawing and organizing my space. I organized my entire space yesterday with my, the help of my mom, who is like one of my biggest supporters. And I just feel pretty chill and uh, just like grateful. There are some weird side effects from the shot, like a giant bruise and like my hip hurt really bad this morning, but that's a given. And I will let someone else talk now. Cool. Really looking forward to seeing how this goes with the shot. It's brand new now, so a couple of days in. And that's very exciting. A great reflection on what we were going to talk about while we get into the topic, actually, about just living in the moment. Stephen, you want to go next? Hey, guys. Uh, it's Stephen here. Um, I've been with uh, Midtown Health and Wellness for a little over three years now. Um, kind of crazy when I think about it. Um, but I'm still, I'm still on the uh, taking subby techs currently weaning off. So, um, I was on eight milligrams and on seven for about a week and I'm feeling pretty good. Um, and hopefully that, you know, that continues. Um, uh, you know, I was feeling christened earlier. Um, I've been having a lot of rubble, um, a lot of, um, butting heads a lot with, uh, my mom, who is also my biggest supporter. Um, so trying to find uh, the balance right now is is kind of where where my head is. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's taking a soul on me. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll talk a little more about it um, once we get rolling. Um, but yeah, that's where I am right now. Thanks. Uh, Amy, you're up. Hey, my name's Amy. And uh, I'm from Virginia. And well, yeah, that's where I live. And, uh, no, ever since I got out of the program, I've just been trying to keep everything straight, you know, keep going, not give up, not turn to the streets, because it has been very stressful trying to find another doctor. And um, so I finally got my ducks in a row, but I'm having to drive like two hours away and then the next day, back 45 minutes to get on medicine. So, I mean, but you know how it is. Well, y'all don't know how it is in the South, but it, it's not very friendly with uh, addicts, recovering addicts. But I'm hanging in there. My dad came to visit. We had a very good visit. It was overwhelming, but I enjoyed it, and I really needed it. We got to bond. I mean, he lost his wife, but it's terrible to say, but I finally got my dad back, you know. And um, I hope it's like that for a while. And I've just been busy, just so busy and keeping myself busy. So I won't smoke cigarettes and trying to slow down cigarettes and, you know, but everything's been pretty good this way. That's great. It sounds uh, way more upbeat than it was a couple of weeks yeah. ago, right? Yeah. Just getting in the Christmas spirit like y'all saw me. Um, that's that's what I'm doing. Um, John, you're up. Yes. Hi, I'm John. I've been with Midtown Health and Wellness for over three years. I have uh, two, two, two years and five months uh, in sobriety. It's my sober time. Um, it's been uh, pretty busy over the past 
couple of weeks uh, between getting ready to move, just coming up uh, December 29th and for the holidays, just life in general, it's just been busy and somewhat overwhelming, but uh, dealing with it day by day and doing what I can um, day at a time, taking the thing at a time. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to, to moving. Uh, we're going to be closer to my family, which will be nice. And hopefully it'll be easier to commute into work. I know it seems, um, kind of backwards since I'm moving from New York city to Connecticut, um, when my job is in Manhattan, but, uh, for me, it's, it's a lot easier to stick the Metro North chain in and walk to my job but oh anyhow. i thought you worked at home I, I do but uh i do have to go in um once or twice a week uh so yeah i have to go in the office a couple times a week and it's, it's not easy to get to work from where i'm at so yeah and it'll be nice just to be able to just drive to the train station take the express and walk up to work or, and i don't have to worry about all the other things that i'm dealing with right now to get to work so anyway and it'll be a lot cheaper so Anyway, yes. Yeah, you got a that. lot going on. You got a lot going on. Maybe yeah. Christmas, good Lord. Yeah, uh, yeah. It should be great. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's 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 all I got going on. Oh, and I've been off of Sublocate for five months, and I'm really happy that Audrey has started um, receiving it. Uh, my advice to you, Audrey, is uh, in the first week, try not to touch the injection area. Let it heal up and harden. Anywho, that's my check-in. Thanks. Cool. Uh, nice to be able to move out of the city and, and commute. I mean, I think uh, at this point, there was a time when I did that every day. Long commute. My commute was two hours and 45 minutes. But at this point, you know, after what I've gone through and all of us have gone through, I would almost consider it a privilege to do that a couple of days a week. Um, you know, it would be kind of more of a luxury than anything else. Um, cause you know, times have been a lot rougher, you know, and I've been getting a day or two. It's kind of nice to be able to get out of the house, get on a train, head into the city once a week, and just, uh, you know, be see part of people something larger. Stuff. See people. Yeah. See other humans. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I'm all, I'm all alone all the time too. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm doing okay too. I'll check in very quickly. Uh, things have been pretty calm. Not a lot going on for me. Uh, for the holidays, just uh, chilling out, take a few days off, and that's about it. Not a lot going on. Um, but I wanted to, uh, we, were, we were talking earlier, and I put out the subject of living in the process or living in the day or the moment. Uh, or as uh, one of the other things was, uh, it's it's about the journey, not the uh, destination. But I was going to tell a really quick story, which sounds really trite when I tell it, but it's actually very meaningful. I was talking about it earlier in the week. So uh, my son's birthday is today, actually. He lives in Boston. And, uh, you know, we haven't had a lot of a, much of a relationship over the years because uh, he was young when we got divorced. And I wasn't really part of his life. So it's been a lot of effort to reconnect over the years. He's 31. So he's no, he's no kid anymore. And uh, so I thought, well, this year, instead of texting him, you know, I'm going to send him a, a birthday card. And uh, I thought, you know, well, it's probably a good idea. And it would be nice, you know, if I could. If I, if it's acknowledged when it gets there, who knows? But it doesn't really matter. I was thinking really about, you know, this thing getting to him as opposed to anything else. So I went and I got the card and I said, you know, I'm going to do it early. I'll go to the post office on the 14th and I'll overnight it. That way it'll get there several days before his uh, his birthday and I'll be covered. So I go to the post office and uh, and as I'm handing the woman the, the uh, express mail envelope, she says to me, so if it doesn't get there, you know, you get your money back and something should have told me something right there, right? Like, wait a minute, you know, cause I know I never used the post office, right? That's the dumbest idea in the world, right? Why was I at the post office to begin with? Why wasn't I at FedEx, right? Where I know it's going to get there, but I wasn't thinking that way. I was thinking about the end results. So I wasn't in the process. I was thinking about this thing getting there. So it turns out it actually did get there last night, finally. <laughs> At least it was delivered. I don't know if he got it, but it took three days of stress of me going, you know what? You can't win, right? I mean, I, I tried this and I can't believe, you know, the post office. And I'm blaming the post office instead of thinking, wait a minute. 
this was me. I did this, right? I was not thinking about the process I was going through. I wasn't thinking in the moment. I was thinking about the next day or or down the road. And so that was my that was my mistake. And that's what prompted this whole conversation this week. And I've had several of them. Um, and it's I think it's really pertinent to a lot of things that are going on, like moving. I want to be moved. I don't want to be moving. I want to be moved. But you know, if we can stay in the day and in the process and in the moment, it really changes all of that. It takes a lot of the stress out of it's so life. hard though. It? It's hard. I know. I mean, it took me a couple of days of you know, tracking this thing and finding out it wasn't there, it wasn't there, it wasn't there to realize, wait a minute, this was me. This has nothing to do with the post office. This has nothing to do with the world out there. This has to do with me not really considering in the moment what I was doing. I was thinking too far ahead. And so that's where all of this came from, this, you know, this whole part about the journey and living in the moment and the process. So I'm going to pass it off. Audrey had her hand up already. Here we go. Yes, I lifted a single finger. Um, still doing the hand raising thing. I, I uh, that helps me, you know. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I feel like lately, like Chris, I've had uh, kind of similar, just like reactions to actions, if that makes sense. Um, like you went to the post office and realized that it might not this like letter might not get to your son um and like in retrospect you were thinking oh man i should have just done this instead um and and you're right that like living in the past or the future is is not really helpful in the moment but amy is also right that it is really hard um and that's like i feel like after after losing my job and then like just thinking a lot about my own life um lately like what i want to do fears about the future fears about immediate things like how am i gonna have enough money to pay for my student loans uh when i don't have a job um all of these things have been coming up for me lately and just like my ability to handle them although it's, it's things still like bother me in my head like i I still have a, a hard time dealing with certain fears and certain things about the past. Um, but I think lately, uh, especially this, this past year, I've more and more so been able to live more, more in the present. Um, and I, I can't help but be very grateful for everyone uh, that has helped me along the way and also for myself and doing the work like like i look at john and i'm i i think of him as such as an, such an inspiration and like honestly everyone here has so many great things to say that like i i aspire to be like everyone here in a different way but aside from that um it, it's just i say that because like i i want to be the best person that i can be and want to put my best foot forward in every situation and I realize it's not always going to happen um but again with like support from from everyone and self self support recently has has just been helping me along the way and I uh I don't know yeah I I've just been writing a lot which helps like you guys have seen seen the writing and uh I think I'm able to reflect on just anything like in my life if I write about it and create something and that that is what I want to keep doing and I also realize that I really want to um, be able to help other people so um, th the point of all of this is for me to say like yes I still have fear about the future and living in the present is really hard but um, I I think I mean a lot of positive positive changes to to be where I am now um and I, I like wouldn't be able to do that without everyone here as well so it's it is important to get that support system and uh yeah and I, I do really want like one of my goals for the future is to be able to find out how I can help people more and like use use my personal strengths of whatever it is like like writing or talking to someone um just to be able to like share 
share my experience, but also like, I just want to help people uh, ultimately in whatever way I can. So that gives some clarity to that, but uh, I will let Stephen say something. Yeah, now. You're already doing it, Audrey. You are. And uh, you know what? Writing is a great way to be in the moment. Let's see how you're feeling right now. I think uh, Stephen was just doing that. We we're talking about that before we started. So I'm going to let you. Yeah. Talk. And she can um, write. Yes. Um, and I want, I want to thank you, Audrey, for sharing your writing. Um, you know, I, I didn't have a chance to respond, but I, I did read. Um, and you, ins you inspired me. Um, and actually, I was uh, talking to John when I first logged into Zoom. You know, an hour ago, I was hysterically crying because I felt so overwhelmed with emotions, um, specifically regarding my mom. Um, and I wrote this, this letter. And so, um, just, you know, I, I, did, I just felt like I needed to get out my feelings and emotions and there was no other way. So I just picked up a pen and, and, and I did it. And I thought of you when, when I was doing it. Um, and so you are helping people, you, you, you helped me. Um, and I, I appreciate that. So no matter how big or small, you know, you are, you are helping people. Um, and I also want to make a note that, you know, along along this journey, you know, we're always going to have fears, we're always going to have self-doubt. Um, and I think you, you were totally right when, um, you know, it's all about your support system and who you can count on. Um, but just to give you guys a, a, a brief, uh, backstory into to what, what I'm going through right now. Um, recently, uh, my mom has been acting and communicating in ways that are extremely childish, immature, histrionic, um, and showing very, very clear signs um, related to uh, borderline personality disorder. Again, I'm not, none of us are, are doctors, I'm not diagnosing, um, but that's kind of, I feel like what I'm going through right now. Um, and my struggle is I feel like I'm constantly putting out fires for her um, I've turned into the parent. She expects me to parent her. Um, and it's, I've been conditioned to do this, um, by my life. Um, and you know, just today I, I, I actually looked at like my, my, my bank statements and between Ubers and lending her money and buying her dinner when, when she didn't have money and, and getting her dog to the vet, you know, I spent a little over $3,000 this year. Um, which, which is a lot, you know, that's money I can be, I could put towards the house that I want to buy, you know, um, you know, I, I, I want to adopt a child. It could have gone, gone, you know, towards applications like that. So the thing that I'm struggling with is I, I don't know how to live in the moment when I don't have a moment. Like, I don't feel like the moments are mine. Um, I feel like they're always someone else's. Um, so I, you know, I have to make the decision to, you know, create some very strict boundaries. Um, and it sucks because this is coming from my best friend and, and greatest supporter. So it, um, it's, 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 it's hard. Um, and this isn't something I've talked to her about. Um, I hope she doesn't watch this podcast, um, at least before I, I get to talk to her. Um, but uh, it, it's important. I think that I share with you guys um, what I'm going through. Um, I mean, hope, you know, I know there's people out there that um, can relate. I'll tell you what, right, writing that letter is a great way to bring yourself back into the present. You know, like you said, you're exploring your own feelings. and It has nothing to do with anybody else. And, you know, and you don't have to share it, like you said. We can write these things down and then, you know, I think I've talked about this before, sometimes set them on fire, let things go, uh, if that's helpful. Um, or just put it away and bring it out weeks later and take a look at how we're feeling. If anything has changed and have we been able to, you know, resolve anything, it's just a great process. It's a great way to be, to be present in our own lives. And, uh, like you said, we don't have to do anything with it except it's an act, right? It's an act of getting things out and getting our feelings out onto paper so that there, it takes it down just a, a little bit, right? It takes all that stress down just a notch if we can write it out it's really important i'm really glad you guys are talking about this um, i've been doing it for years years and years and years i don't know i think about writing for like, i don't know 
since before I got clean. So I don't know, 16, 17, 18 years, something like that. I've been putting these thoughts down on paper. Um, it's been it's been life changing, really has. Okay, me, you were. Yeah, it really does help a lot to write. It really does. I know I used to write a lot um, to my dad, and my mother lived with me for ten years before she died, and I had to set boundaries. And it's hard with your mother. It's hard. It just is. That's your mom. You want to do anything you can for her, but. You've got to remember that we've only got one life. And um, that's the main thing you need to remember. And you need to put you first. I know how hard that is. I know it's taken me forever. And I'm still trying to do that. And I feel like you do a lot of times that I don't have a moment. I'm just constantly doing for everybody else, you know. But um we just have to learn boundaries, and that's the main thing, I think, is the main thing. And um, I can just totally relate to you, Stephen, for real. I've just been through that with both of my parents. So I was the, I'm the mom, and they were the kids, you know. And it's hard because you're used to having your mom, you know. And then the older they get, it's like sometimes they just – revert back to child like i don't know how that yeah. works but and 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 the, and the thing is like you know i am pictured myself taking care of my mom when she's 80 not when she's right. you know but when i'm 33 and she's in her okay oh late 50s yeah. uh <laughs> um, yeah that's not you know there's certain situations where she is able to um but for, you know for some reason or another um has to rely on other people and exaggerate her situations or um you know um like the only thing the only way that she's happy is when she invents these incredible situations where dramatic wait yes yeah, where she could wave and vent and become the center of of, of attention yep. and that was it's my mom. not helpful to, to to anyone um around them um and it's hard when you love them because you don't know what to do you want to help right. them but you know it's 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 really hard yeah, it it really is, and I feel for you. I'm gonna have you in my prayers because it is rough. I mean, it is, and um, I've cried a million times over my parents. So, but I have decided that I'm no longer letting anyone steal my joy. They can live how they want to live. They're not taking mine anymore. That's for me, and I'm a happy person in general. I'm very happy. Um. I'm going to stay that way because I'm tired of it. I'm just sick and tired of it. Now it's time for us. It is. And our loved ones and our family, and they had a life and they've had 50 some years on this earth. My dad's had 70 some years. You know, it's our turn. So oh, I love that. You're not going to let anyone steal your joy. That's such a great phrase. I love that. Beautiful. John, you, just, wanna you know, chime in you want to be, you know, you just, you want to be happy and spread the happiness. Like, you know, I got on here and Stephen was like, oh, you're looking nice tonight. That's not, that's just, but she raised a perfect son. I give her that. <laughs> nice. And I'm happy to jump in, Chris. Um, yeah, I think that we all should take care of ourselves, right? Or at least try to, right? I know that I need to take care of myself before I can take care of anybody else. Just uh, not being able to feel right about, I mean, like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of some times where moments have might have been uh, taken from me like that, where I went, um, I don't know, where I, where I helped, helped a family member, right? And the only thing I can think of is, is my grandmother um, when she died in 2020 uh at the end there she would um sh she also was a very dramatic person and if she didn't i don't know when i brought her food I, if i didn't bring her something the right way she would freak out about it and uh, i would do anything for her i loved her you know like um but there was a um i don't know a line that i just had to draw in my head where i was like all right I, 
yes, I love my grandmother, but she's also talking to me. Um, not very nice. Right. Uh, so yeah. So, I mean, I, I still took care of her, but, um, I don't know. My, my case wasn't as extreme as this, but, uh, I think that, I think what I ended up doing was just talking with my, like my parents about it or somebody else in the family about it. Like, listen, this is what's going on. Grandma, I don't, you know, I'm not comfortable the, with the way she's talking to me, even though I'm helping her or whatever. And, um, you know, figure it out as a, I don't know if you have that in your, your life, Stephen, but, um, working it out with other family members might help because sometimes, um, some people don't listen to other people. I, I don't know. I like, I don't know. It may come differently out of somebody else's mouth than it may be heard differently, um, by that person. Right. Like I, I it's, it's really strange that way. Um, but, uh, I, that, that's what worked in that situation. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess other than that, living in the moment, um, yeah, uh, it's important to for me to be aware of whether I'm um focused too too focused on like oh boy what's ahead of me or um you know what did I do in the with one thing I do need to be aware of is past feelings that come up because those creep up on me. Like I, I need a, I need a, I need to be super vigilant about that. Where it's like, you know, something comes up from my past. I remember something, and I'm like, oh crap, um, that's me. Right, right, exactly, right. Like you, you know what I'm talking about. Where it's just like, hang oh, on, yeah. I know where that leads. No, <laughs> not today, not today, uh, not but, today. So yeah, yeah, right. Uh, but that it's it's hard to 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 do that but you gotta you gotta be i don't know for me i'd be uh completely comfortable with myself and knew i have, I have to know when something's like not right where now that i'm off supplicate like i can feel it like i'm like this doesn't feel right this is not right like um i even, bet you've had some crazy feelings yeah it's um update if you think about it you're on drugs yeah. Then you're on Suboxone, mm -hmm. then the Sublocade. So you, for years now. So you yep. hadn't felt that for years. Yeah, 17, 18 years. I, I don't I don't even know what a feeling felt like. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? So like I'm, I'm figuring out happiness and joy and fear and whatever, whatever else it may be. Like, because um, I felt uh, a certain way uh, where I was, like my legs were shaking and, my eyes were watering and I was you know, yawning a bit. I thought it was withdrawals, but it's just anxiety. Um, but I had to talk to a doctor about it, right? Like, I, you know, yep, I yep. it's you just gotta like, make sure. Yeah. I'm like, is it, what is this? I don't know what this is. Here's my symptoms. Like, and, you know, and check with them. But uh, nine times out of 10, uh, for me, uh, it's, it's been just some emotional um, feeling or thought or whatever. Uh, I don't know. Um, but anyway, yeah, like just uh, staying in the present for me is just trying to, you know, remember what I'm grateful for um, and, you know, having that support network, like Audrey said, that's super important. Uh, and I think trust, trust in oneself. Because um, I, I, that's I, a big one. It is a big one. Because like, you know, I think in the beginning, like, I don't know. Even we, if don't, I went, we don't trust our decision. No. And like, even like when I'd go to meetings, like, um, like, I don't even, I don't know, like I'd still lie. Like to, I wasn't bringing my full on a self to pay meetings, self-help. I just, just I go into therapist or whatever it was. I, I would still be lying in that stuff when I should have been helping myself. But I, you know, the, this is, you know years ago but now it's all I mean, a learning process yeah it's now it's like well i'm going to get you know i'm just, I need to get help i gotta go get help for myself yeah but. it's like we're kindergartners yeah right? and Seriously. then we're growing up through this you know mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> one thing i noticed uh that i wanted to bring up uh, that you had mentioned last time um amy uh you had asked me if my libido had came back and yes it 
it has, and I've had the opportunity to, to awesome. test it out. And um, yeah, it's good. <laughs> I just need to know that. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Um, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, other things I'm finding are coming back over time, like slowly but surely, like my appetite and I don't know, things in general. This is going to take time yeah. for your body to. Yeah, yeah I so. mean, it's been suppressed for, I don't know. It's, more than half my life so it's just yeah it's figuring out what it, All right. what it needs to do steven i want to ask I like you the libido sorry test. john yeah right um so, would you ever consider giving your mom a letter um i think it would be best to talk to her because um i think you know she'll yeah you might read, come across she, she, yeah, yeah she'll read something that that means one thing and then she'll twist it and it'll mean totally something else. Um, and it's where the woman sounds just like it'll all come back on me. It'll all come back on me. Um, yep. and I think, I think I need to, you know, be well prepared. And both my sister and I, you know, sit down with her, be like, listen, that's a good idea. You know, these are specific examples of when we feel like you've crossed the boundary, your brand, and we felt uncomfortable or guilty or ashamed. Um, and you know, we don't want to continue that relationship. We want to have a healthy relationship with you. Um, so it's a very good and, idea. Um, yeah. You know, get um, your yeah, sister but, on board. Yeah. And it was another reason why I, I posted on Reddit. Um, I don't know if any of you had a chance to see it, but hearing from other people, um, strangers who, who don't know me, uh, just presenting my situation and then just hearing back was very, very helpful. And, um, you know, it's kind of, um, you know, just it was very, very validating. Um, and it's what it's, it's what I needed. Um, so because I thought, yeah. you know, I, I'm sitting here thinking it's me. I'm doing something wrong. Right, right. I think we the only. Easy. And it was yeah. uh, like, I, I totally understand wanting to like um, and actually sharing your stuff to, on a platform where it's anonymous for one and then right anonymous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then getting that validation from people also just talking to people about it because on a place like reddit i feel like people are honest because it's anonymous and also like nice like there's a community obviously not everyone on reddit or the internet is nice but i think it was a good idea to post it and see what other people think and especially like you know writing it down and everything it's really like Obviously, this situation is terrible, but like I'm happy that you at least like found some inspiration and in uh, in my my writing stuff, and um, you were able to express like how you're feeling and to just having a a certain family member that you're you're not comfortable with, and the boundaries are all off. Um, it's it's a lot of a lot of give and not a lot of you know it's not a lot of the other person giving back to you, um, which also goes back to like codependency and everything. But I, I'm, I'm sorry that you're dealing with such a, I'm sorry that you're dealing with this. And um, I, I'm, I'm just happy you were able to make some steps move forward with, with some of this, even though it still sucks. Like I, I was going to say that I, I've been in the situation with a family member where um it feels like if I bring something up that is bothering me, like just it could be the smallest thing. It could it could blow up into into like these deeper, like a, a way bigger conversation and way bigger meanings behind what we're saying. Like like asking a family member or telling a family member that I need to put Drano in the sink and and they ask me, like, you know, what did you put in the sink? And I take that as like, okay, you are you are attacking me. And then they say I'm being defensive. And then this is like a whole different, like, this is this is more than we intended to speak about right now. So that's why it's also important to like have a, a group of people, you know, that you can talk to about this, like your siblings or um this anyone. And I understand that it's hard to like figure out a game plan for how to go about these things because it's when you're at least like when I'm unsuccessful so many times it's like why should I even try um 
but like at a, at a certain point, I think, I think maybe you're at the point where you can start making, making some changes for yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think personally, my biggest fear is losing her, uh, like losing contact with her. Um, but I feel like if I continue our relationship, the way it's been going, it'll do more damage. Yeah. You could just it. Really, you know, um, and I, yeah, I, I don't want to, I don't want, you know, I dealt with resentment. I, I don't, don't want that in my life. Um, especially, you know, um, associating with, with, with my mom. Um, but you know, I'm optimistic moving forward. Um, you know, it was helpful, you know, getting that on Reddit and hearing feedback, you know, talking to you guys and, you know, I'll certainly keep you posted on what my next steps are and, and how it works out. And please yeah. know I'm always here. Can you think? Always. Thank you. I was going to say, going back to Amy's original question, you know, would you read your letter and what often, you know, I do and lots of other people do, and we talk about this a lot in recovery is writing the letter and then reading it to some other people. I mean, I know you went on Reddit, but actually reading it out loud to someone else um, and seeing what, what it sounds like. Because sometimes just reading it out loud and saying it, it's very, very different than writing it, right? When you just read it back out loud. Um, it translates very differently. Um, so it's it's worth doing that too if you haven't just speaking the words that you've written. Um, it changes everything and it, uh, it takes on a whole different meaning. So it's it's worth that, all of those things. And uh, like you're doing, you know, get help. You know, we can't do any of this stuff on our own. None of us can. It's impossible. It's too challenging. It's too difficult. It's too many nuances, like you said. That's you never why... know how someone's going to pick up one word can make the difference yeah. yep and that's why we have people and that's why we need to be out in the world and maybe go to an aa meeting or something every now and then because you don't know who you'd meet and in your network of people and you get to add to your you know and i'm sitting here i'm one to talk but i really need to do that also because i have y'all but like here i don't have you know it's not understood so yeah, I feel that and, <laughs> and the past, yeah, and the past just gets thrown up in my face all the time. And I, I can't, it seems like I can never get out of the past. And it's like, but I'm out, but it's like, okay, get up here with me. Let's get here in the present and, you know, stay here. But it's just very hard around my parts for that. Yeah. I live in a really small, small town that I've lived in for my entire life. So I can, I can have only relate to like, not like get on my level, but just like, I can't connect with anyone here. Like right. for so many reasons. And like, I, again, that, that, that just the environment can sometimes make you want to like shut yourself off. Yeah. Um, yeah. To those people, but I'm the same, I'm the same way. Like, yeah, I'll connect with you guys. I'll connect with my friends, but like, just, general outreach in my own community is kind of difficult which sounds really privileged but like it's it's uh yeah i i also think i need to you know go to some meetings or just like yeah. try because get out of our comfort zone yeah yeah it helps you gotta get out of your out of your comfort zone i i read a lot about uh and also like I've had therapy sessions about getting out of your comfort zone in so many different ways. And, um, it, you have to, sometimes you have to deal with the discomfort, see how much you can endure and, and just like literally your brain receptors when you, when you get in, into an, uh, unusual situation, maybe you haven't experienced this before your, your, the receptors in your brain start firing somehow and, and new experiences bring, oftentimes can bring you joy if it's you know a, a good experience but anyway um i also wanted to wanted to say and that's that's why I, I have been sharing the writing with you guys and i share it like with my family and and my friends um and, and that like even though it's very personal i'm like i i just want to hear people back and maybe learn something about you learn something about myself like it, anything anyone has to say is ultimately helpful i think so 
I think I'm gonna get you to write my book. I was just gonna say I love. Uh, uh, I don't know if there's a, a name for the style of writing, but when I was reading it, I felt like you were talking to me. It just yeah. felt like so natural, and I love how you didn't correct your mistakes. It felt. I felt like like you were there, and I was having a conversation with you. So this just the way you write. I, um, I, I really like that. Really, uh, you know, stuck out to me, and I, and I, I like that. Um, so yeah. yeah. It was the awesome. That's so good to hear. I love, I love the compliments. But also, like, tell me, like, if it's worked anything, like, yeah, yeah, I want to know. That's why I share it. So, thank you. Well, anything you've gone through is going to be, you know, we're going to relate to, guaranteed. I, I don't think you have anything to worry about. And you do, you do write beautifully, and I'm glad you're sharing it. It is, and it, like you're talking about, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world to do in the beginning. Um, and, uh, it's called getting comfortable with uncomfortability and some, it's, it's interesting. Someone, when I was talking to you about that, called it becoming comfortable with discomfort, but that's not what it is. It's not discomfort because discomfort is like kind of a physical feeling of, you know, this doesn't feel good. Uncomfortability is that kind of angst of, wow, I'm putting myself out there. And what if, what if I'm wrong? What if people don't like me? What if? you know, I push people away. What, I mean, what could happen here? And the chances are it's going to be just the opposite that people are going to be drawn to you instead. Like what's happening. You can see that, uh, you know, in our small group, it certainly works and you can, you know, start to broaden that too. And, you know, see if we can, you know, get other platforms maybe going so that we have some writing that we can share with, uh, with the world too. Oh yeah. Um, and, and another thing is like, if you don't put yourself out there, you know, discomfort and is, you know, you have to be discomfort. You have to sometimes be uncomfortable in order to grow, you know? Um, and how and, would you go to know yeah, if yeah. the questions you want answered about your writing? Exactly. You know? So exactly. I'm very proud of you for doing that. That yeah. was big time. <laughs> but one of the reasons we, we fall into addiction certainly is because we're uncomfortable and we don't want to feel it. Right? And we've got to hide that. We've got to mask it. We have to cover it up. When we get sober, that's tough because suddenly, you know, we're exposed. We don't have that anymore. You know, we don't have that. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know what to call it. Our best friend to reach for to make us comfortable, right? To, uh, right, right. to de deaden our nerves and knock down. The yeah, feelings. numb us out. You yeah. know? It's also like with our, at least with my mind and probably everyone's mind here, like the the negative thing speech speak can speak much louder than Always. So if you're told something things by someone in your life, then it's like, why would I, why would I ever want to experience that again? So I'm not, I'm not going to share myself, but like, yeah, but what, what you guys are saying, like every, every time you put yourself out there, it, it could, it could lead to something negative or something positive. And you just like over time, you can learn how to take the positive instead of the negative. Right. But that's a really valid fear because, you know, a lot of us uh, grew up. I suppose in situations where we weren't necessarily encouraged, right? We might have been talked down to, demeaned, and those that language becomes our own language. I yep. know for me, I started talking to myself that way. You know that I'm not good enough, and I can't no, you're possibly. Stupid. Nobody's yeah. going to want. Nobody's ever going to want to listen to what I have to say. And, uh, and I, and I beat myself up for years and years and years, um, saying I'm not good enough and I'm just not going to do it because it's too scary. Um, took a lot of recovery to get to a place where, you know, I could do some of that, put some of that writing out into the world and share things, and share my thoughts and share my feelings. I did learn a lot of that in a meetings, honestly. Um, and it wasn't so much about what went on in the meetings as about me openly sharing over and over and over until I felt okay doing it. And then once I felt okay doing it there, then I could bring it out into other parts of my life. And I could feel a little bit more comfortable talking to people honestly in other situations. So it was a real, it was a long process. Talk about living in the process. I think I probably mentioned before, it took me probably eight years to get to that place. Um, a good eight years in recovery to get to where I could start taking that out and start using it in other places in my life and feel okay about it and not worry about what was coming back at me because I don't care. You know, it doesn't yep, matter. Right so there, that right there. That right there. You worked so much on yourself. Yeah.
I, yeah, yeah, I got to a point too where I was just like, yeah, I don't care. I, I, I mean, I care to an ex- I mean, I care what I put out, right? But yeah, like, I don't want to offend anyone. I, I, I care <laughs> what I put out, but like, I don't care what people's opinions are about me. I, I just people's judgments and opinions. And it took me years to get. And it goes right back to what you guys were saying before about not just trusting ourselves, but trusting in the whole process of getting to that place. Um, because it does work if you stay in the process and just stick it out you, we all get there yeah i i, I think audrey um what she, what she went through to get the shot like proves exactly that point um that's what i had to go through to get the shot uh maybe not i mean maybe not the same but like we wanted it so bad enough that we would, you know, day by day, we just kept chipping away at it until we got what we wanted. Right. It was a good feeling afterwards. I, or at least for me, when I was able to say, dang, I got it. <laughs> you know, like yeah, it was uh, crazy. Like when they said it's a dollar on the phone, I was like, I don't know how to feel, but like, I'll be happy soon. Um, because it was just so much work and John like did help a lot. Like, I just texted him and I was like, what do I do? Should I send this giant email to the office? And he was like, yes. So I, I did that. And then like, I realized that I had like overshot a fair amount. Like I reached out to some like New York state program of like, uh, it's like called the, it's called the champ program, but they help with, I basically got like an associate on the phone with me when I, they told me the copay at like a person that, how do I describe it? She, it's a nonprofit that helps people get medication for addiction uh, and stuff. So she was on the phone with me, followed the HIPAA regulations and everything, but she heard that it was a dollar and she's like, oh my God, good job. So at least I got her support and like everyone's support here. Uh, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, I, I give uh, them $2 for it. <laughs> uh, uh, quick question. Uh, did you get it administered uh, there at the nonprofit? No, no. This lady was just trying to help me like, talk to my insurance about it oh, gotcha. like, okay it had been like two weeks talking on the phone no like a week like three or four straight days of insurance calls and like also calls to the office whatever so that was like the last day that you know that we figured things out i was on the phone with her and it just so happened um but yeah i got the shot at midtown health and wellness and justin was amazing like not e- not even exaggerating great yeah, he's awesome. He told me about about knowing little Peep, and I, I we were just like <laughs> screaming at each other, like, "No way, dude!" Like, it was it was great. He's guy. cool. He's really he cool. I missed him. I'll tell you what, Audrey. When you get a chance, send me the number for that place because I don't know that champ or whatever you were calling it. Yeah, what, is that like a, a Abbott? Ad, what is it? Yeah, they're advocates. Abbott, 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 Abbott group. Yeah, yeah. I want to uh, give that out to some other people. I think that yeah, it's the New York State Champ program, C H A M P. I can send you the link. I've never seen that come up when I was searching for stuff. So yeah, my sister found it for me. Actually, I was like, "Give me the all the links you can." I was like, "You need to Google for me because I need to get the shot." And uh, she sent me she sent me the link to like the New York State Medicaid like brochures, and it was in there, deep in there. Somewhere. Yeah, I bet it was. But uh, it's but see, now you have it, we can share it. Right, right. Yeah, sorry. But you know, the, the oldest wouldn't have fooled. Like, we've been like, we got to do all that. No, man, just, you yeah. know. But look how far we've come, you know. We do flip the cartwheels trying to get it, you know. Cartwheels? Seriously. Couldn't That's think good. of nothing else. <laughs> well, and you're, you realize now that what you went through, because you got that information, is now someone else is definitely going to benefit. Lots, See? Lot, lots of a people. lot of people lots of yeah. people um so i'm going to be sharing that um with anybody who, you know who needs it so great it's great that you found that that's awesome i'll share the link uh i'll share it with you right now it's like a little link i'll just do you do you guys want it in the chat or i'll whatever you can share um email yeah. email to everybody afterwards okay. okay cool cool great stuff really really interesting um and great information the more the merrier um because we know how difficult it's been for a lot oh, of people yeah. Um, so, yeah steven's been going through it too trying to get a shot and ryan and uh i think there's someone else also 
I'd be talking. Stephen, I'd be happy to give you, you know, my fupa, my little gut here. I'd be more than happy. I'll take it, please. I think <laughs> it's yeah, like a list. I a little got something. plenty. God, and I've been trying. Oh my end, I've been. Oh, I've been eating I can only sore, and I, I'm like, I stepped on the scale before. It's like I can't even point two pounds. I'm like, oh, it's your metabolism. God. Such a high metabolism. Uh, I do have to uh, head out. Can I say my just, have fun? Uh, okay. Gratitude, and then we'll go around anyway because it's that right. time. So go Sorry. for it. Sorry for cutting in. Uh, okay. I am grateful for everyone here and this group. It get keeps getting better and better. Honestly. Uh, yeah, I'm just so grateful for what we have here and my support system and getting supplicate and the future. You are the best. See you soon. Merry Christmas, Audrey. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy holidays. Bye. Well, we're in gratitude mode now, so let's we may as well just uh, let's do it. So, uh, Stephen, you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm super grateful for all of you. Um, you have no idea. Um, I'm I'm feeling. A lot better than 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 what I was when just a couple hours ago. So so thank you. Um, always grateful for for my girl, um, and grateful grateful for for the moment. And I'm gonna try my best to you know take advantage and and stay in the moment and and make the most out of it. So well, thanks, Stephen. Amy, you're up. Well, y'all know I'm grateful for you and um, just really because y'all are my support system and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that my husband has a job and he's working and grateful for him and grateful for Lakin and my daughter Casey and just my whole family. Um, my dad coming in to see me and being with me in court, you know, and all that and hanging out at the pool and just. I'm grateful. Just my heart's full this right now. And I just wish everybody out there a Merry Christmas. And you all know I'm here if you need me. Thanks, Amy. John? Yeah. Um, I can't believe I went through this whole podcast and not uh, bring up the saying that Frankie wanted on the shirt uh, about, uh, <laughs> he was like, uh, well, well, the saying was um, uh, step into the, uh, future and past at your own discretion right um i think it was the past leads to um depression and um the future leads to anxiety stress i think those are i think those are the the words i used i don't know i'll have to go back and re-listen but um <laughs> i didn't bring that up but anyway uh, i'm grateful for the group and uh how i feel after every group that i just feel so much better um just coming here and Talking with everybody, um, being honest and getting everybody's perspective and, you know, with a group of like-minded people that are just absolutely fantastic. And uh, I'm grateful for my wife, my family, another day alive and sober, and for Chris for hosting the podcast and our listeners. That's it. Thanks. You know what uh, I was going to say? We've been, uh, we've been at this for almost a year. I think our, our very first trial run was in February of this year, I think. You know? So it's been quite a run. And uh, I got to say, um, in terms of gratitude, the uh, the amount of growth that's happened in, in our little group over this past year has been absolutely exponential and unbelievable. It really has. Um, <laughs> it's so different than when we started. I mean, for all of us, me too. I mean, we've all, we've all grown so much and, uh, and become so open and honest and, and caring about others. It's just, it's pretty incredible. And I, I, I don't know how to express gratitude for, for that kind of growth. I don't think it's possible. I don't think I can, um, because it's just so incredible to be part of, um, and that we get to keep doing this. And, and I think that, uh, I don't know, even if we just do it for us, it's worth every hour that we spend together. Because me too. I mean, I always feel better at the end of these things too, right? I mean, it's it's productive. It's it's uplifting. It's educational, and uh, and there's an awful lot of love in here, and uh, it's just really, really meaningful. So I wish all of you guys a happy holiday too, and uh, 
we may, I guess, well, a couple of weeks is actually, what is it? That's New Year's Day, but I don't know. We may be doing this. See what everybody's up to on that Sunday, the very, the first of January. Maybe you That'd be to, cool. That'd be a good day to do yeah. one of these. Yeah, yeah, new beginning. Yeah, it's not a bad yeah. idea. I'm, I'm up for it, certainly. I'm up for bringing the new year in that cool. way. That'd okay. be cool. Yeah. I think that could work. All right. It's, uh, it's been great. Oh, I got to read my thing here. My wrap. <laughs> Do your spiel now. Got to do my spiel. Thanks, everyone, uh, and for bringing your honesty and your insights and your love and, and brilliance, really, uh, to this group. And uh, thanks to our listeners for joining us. If anyone out there has any thoughts, please share them uh, on our YouTube channel or uh, through Spotify or anywhere else we can uh, find a way in. And uh, we really look forward to hearing from you. So thanks, everybody, and we'll see you all on uh, New Year's Day. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, everyone. Season's greetings. (laughs) 